Good morning, everyone. How was your night? Fine, ma. Yes. You are welcome to our class today, which is Good NSC. Morning, Good morning. NSC 209. That is physical and health assessment. So our class today is on physical and health assessment, which is NSC 209. I am Dr. Elizabeth Joseph Shehu, your class, your course facilitator. Like I said during our introductory class, that the class is more of practical class. So as much as possible, we'll see how we can make it interesting for every one of us. Today we'll be looking at overview of physical and health assessment. And I'll start the class by asking us a question. And I can see that we are, okay, people are still joining the class. We are about 51 now. So we have a rule in this class because all of us are professional nurses. I expect you, who is covering my screen for me? One of the rules we have in this class is when I ask you a question in this class and you don't have anything to say, Sadia, I will take you out of the class. And I don't want to warn you again, Sadia. So one of the rules is that because of us are professional nurses, when I ask you a question, consistently for three times, do not answer. That shows you are not interested in the facilitation. Are we clear with that? You can just use the chat engine. As much as we want the class very interesting, like I said, I don't want any of you that attend this facilitation to have anything less than A. And if that's going to happen, it's going to take us to work together very well. So the first question I'm going to ask us to answer is health assessment. As nurses, there is no day you go to the hospital. If you cannot hear me, that's why you have to check your internet. There's no day you go to the hospital and you not conduct health assessment. Am I right? Abduahab. Abduahab, unmute yourself. Okay, I've unmute, ma. Okay, good morning. Good morning, ma. Yes. So, hope you can hear me now. Yes, ma. I hear some people saying they cannot hear me. Yes. So, like I was saying, there is no day we go to the hospital that will not conduct health assessment. And yes, even if you are, if you are in a, in a school or different, um, different, different setting, care setting, yes, let's say you are in a school as a school nurse, or you are in the community, even as a lecturer, is there any day you will not do assessment? No, ma'am. Thank you. So this takes me to our first question. Abdulwahab, what can you tell us about health assessment? We are today like just an overview. What can you say about health assessment? Okay, health assessment, my understanding is a way of collecting data, clinical data from our clients. So it could be in the form of maybe the physical uh, assessment of head to toe or even the vital signs. All these are attempts to assess the patients. Okay, thank you for that contribution. If your environment is quiet as it is now, you can leave your speaker on so that when I hear from you, I can know that other people are hearing from me. <clears throat> Mercy. 
Hello, Mercy. Yes, ma. Good morning, ma. Good morning. What can you tell me about health assessment? Yes, ma. <laughs> Excuse me. Health assessment is a general assessment of a patient or client that involve both physical, maybe from head to toe, the nutrition of the patients, the obstetric, generally, everything that involves the patients, even family history, so that as a nurse, you'll be able to give a quality care to the patient or the clients. Okay, thank you. Is there any other thing I want to add on health assessment? The two speakers have spoken very well on health assessment. Before we go on, what are the principles of health assessment? If you want to conduct health assessment, what and what you need to put in place before you can say, yes, I'm ready, or we are done health assessment. Yeah, yeah, Yamata, Yamta. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning, how are you? Me, according to my understanding about health assessment, no, we are talking yeah. about principles now. Oh, principles. The principles yes. now, you have to get a patient consent, number one. Yes. Number two, you have to find a quiet No, just one. Give us one. Consent. consent okay, see the patient consent. Yes. yes. Okay. In the modern in the modern medicine now or in the modern nursing, you cannot perform any procedure without a patient consent. Sometimes it can lead even to collegial something. That's why if you explain everything to the patient, for example, if you want to assess a female patient as a male nurse, you need to find a somebody who is the same gender with that patient so that, okay. <clears throat> so that you can make that assessment in front of that person of the same gender in order to prevent, in order to prevent something like, say, you touch something, you touch something like that. According okay. to my Understanding. Okay, thank you. Who want to add on consent? Sadia, your hand is up. Do you want to say anything? You can unmute yourself. Want to speak? Hello, Sadia. Okay. Without wasting time, Ada will be. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Sadia, your environment is noisy. Okay, let me change the environment. Ada Obi, you can speak, please. Why Sadia is changing her environment? All right. So, I hope you are hearing me. Yes, I can hear you. So, hello. Yes, hello. I can hear you. Okay. I will say, all right, I will say that for the um, concept form to be complete, you have to make sure that you have to, to make sure that the patient give you that and allowed you to do whatever you want to do. And again, you have to make sure that the information that the patient is giving you is confidential between you and the patient. That is maintenance of con uh, confidentiality of the patient. Okay. And so you make sure that what is going you that is a successful ended question that you allow the patient to speak to, to end no, we are, you are discussing consent i think you are still discussing consent uh, that yaya mentioned uh, before we are on the issue of consent what does consent entails when you want to take consent what does it entails and that will be i'm still with you what does consent entails we make use of consent a lot in nursing. What does it entail? Okay, while you are thinking about it, Janet, you can unmute yourself. It turns out the consent allows you. Okay, I do be continue to to to, and you make sure that that the patient the patient that is giving the consent of the age cannot give you a, cannot give. <laughs> Adobe, I can't hear you again. I think we have lost him. I mean, we have lost time in. Janet. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I think the first thing about consent is awareness of the patient. Let the patient 
that. Can you speak out? I'm not hearing you. That about the consent, ma. Let the patient understand what you're about to carry out. Yes, like that is key. Yeah, you you let you give the patient awareness. You explain the procedure to the patient, and before proceeding to the main procedure, the physical assessment. Now. Okay, thank you very much. I think that is the key thing I want to hear. Like somebody said, consent entails the explanation of all you are about to do, and now it will help in planning of care for that patient. Before we go into our class, the slide for today, I want to expand on this concern. Me, me and you agree that when you know what somebody is about to do with you, the tendency you will cooperate with that person, no matter how painful that situation will be or that procedure will be, because you are, you are in the known what this person wants to do and the implication of that procedure to your life or to, to, your, to you become well. So that, when you're talking about consent, not just you seek the patient consent. No, it go beyond seeking the patient consent. It's you explaining to that patient or that client, I want to conduct a patient on you to, to observe the extent of pain you are having. And for me to be able to know the kind of care to give to you. I'm sure for a reasonable person, when you explain yourself within one minute, that patient is going to cooperate with you more than when you just go straight to the patient and now say, good morning, madam. I want to conduct palpation on you. Remove your wrapper or remove your shirt. I'm sure the person will not, we just like, ah, I'm in the midst, I've, I've come to the hospital. There's nothing I can do. I just have to submit myself to that patient, but to that, to that yes. health caregiver. But at the end of the day, you are not giving, you know, if you remember the definition of nursing very well, caring for individuals sick or well, or to nurse to a peaceful death. For even somebody that is going to die of cancer, if you still give that person a kind of value when you are dealing with that person, there's tendency that that person will live longer. For those of you that unmute your microphone, do you agree with me? Those of you that are in the clinicals. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma yes, ma yes, ma because yes. it's like you giving hope to a hopeless person. You know that, yes, this person will still die in the next one month. And each time that person comes, you know, your smile, you touching that person with regards. Not that this person will soon die. Anyhow. Already the person is even being frustrated. So in our physical assessment, irrespective of the type of physical assessment that you'll be doing as we continue, as we see, as we go on in this class, consent is key, is key and is vital. So let's go for what I prepared for today for us. Like I said, today we are only going to look at principles of health assessment. There are about seven. We'll look at the seven and we'll make all the necessary contribution based on the seven principles. And I think it will be done. Can you see my slide now? Ah. Hey, she who don't disturb our class. Abdul Wahab, your environment is quiet. Uh, 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 you say that you are here to unmute yourself. Uh, if you unmute yourself again and your environment is not quiet, I'll take you out of the class. Can you see my slide now? No, ma. Okay. okay. That's not yet, no. Yes, ma. Yes, ma.
So we'll be looking at principles of health assessment. Like I said at the beginning of the class that we are going to do health assessment overview. And today, by the end of this class, you should be able to describe the seven principles of health assessment. Then we'll take some discussion and we'll end the class. What is health assessment? When you talk about health assessment, it's not something that you can do haphazardly. It has to be a systematic activities. Who is that now? Health assessment is a systematic method of collecting data about a client for the purpose of determining the client current and ongoing health status, predicting risk of health and identifying health promoting activities. So for health assessment, you have to remember that it's a systematic method of collecting data. In another, you cannot, you cannot conduct health assessment without you thinking about data collection. By the time you ask the patient, you are doing physical assessment and you want to do physical examination and you start from the eyes. You start from the eye, you want to do examination of the eyes. Definitely you have to ask the patient to look at you. After looking at you, you have to, before you even carry touch light at all, open touch now as it is to examine the eyes. Well, you have to look at how the person is looking, the, the symmetrical of the eyes. And all this, you do it in form of, you first of all, add the patient to look at you. From there, while the patient is looking at you, you are looking at, you are looking directly into the pupil of the eye. You look at what can you see physically without even you touching anything, just for the person here looking at you. And before then, you now, after then, you go, uh, you go ahead and take pen's touch. That, okay, what are the other things that you cannot see at that point? And you do this in a systematic manner. Not that you want to examine eyes. First of all, even the, the patient that you want to examine the eyes, we might be looking at another direction, not directly looking at you. And if you want to examine the eye, that should the person has to sit directly opposite you so that you can see straight into the eyes. So that is why we say that for health assessment is a systematic method of collecting data. The data you collected a mere looking before you think of taking instruments. And why do you need to collect this data? You collect it for the purpose of determining the client ongoing or current health status, or you collect the data, you do health assessment to know, to predict what the health of the patient can result into. Like the eyes I mentioned before, let's assume there's a pterygium growth on the eyes, on one of the eyes. The patient might not complain of that eye at that point in time. You may just be doing your own physical examination. And by the time you ask the patient to look at you, because you want to examine the eye, and you ask the patient to look at you, you discover that while looking at straight into the patient's eye, there is a growth. But that growth, you might not be able to determine what type of growth it is yet. So already, you take your pen or you'll be able to take your decision. Okay, this is cataract or this is pterygium. But that patient is not there because of that case. That health assessment you have done has revealed a risk to health of that individual. And by so doing, you take note of that and you render, appropri uh, you render care appropriately. Now, you also conduct health assessment to identify health promoting activities. What do they mean by health promoting activities? In the process of you conducting health to toe assessment, while you are assessing the health of this child, you discover there is a ring worm. And you discover uncleanliness of a child. So your attention 
has shifted from the actual purpose why that patient come to be cleaning. Maybe as a result of fever, but you have to change why you are caring for that fever that brought the child to the hospital. You make you you have it at the back of your mind that before this person leave, you have to talk about health promotion. Because if that child not properly being taken care of, there is other condition, disease condition that will make that child to come back to the hospital. So that is why the definition is a systematic method of collecting data about a client for the purpose of determining the client current and ongoing health status, predicting risk to health, and identify health promoting activities. So with this our, uh, definition, we all agree that the definition Abdul Wahab and I think it was blessing gave to us, pointed as this, but they did not mention the fact that it's a systematic method. So, you have to remember, put it at, and not that their definition is not right. It's right. It's, it's a process of you collecting data from the patient. Instead of you to start from head to toes, you can decide I'm starting from toes. And from toes, you jump onto the stomach. From the stomach, remember you want to do head to toes examination. From the stomach, you jump to the back. At that point, you agree with me that it's no more is no more systematic. But the truth is that you are doing health assessment. But as nurses, as professional nurses, it is advisable that when you are doing health assessment, it should be done in a systematic manner. That is where your professionalism comes in. Apart from, even if you are doing focus assessment, as we will see as we go on in this class, that focus assessment still has to be done in a systematic manner. You cannot just be doing your assessment haphazardly. That is that about definition of health assessment. Then we move on to the principles of health assessment. And accurate, the first one we look at is an accurate and timely health assessment provide foundation for nursing care and intervention. So when you're supposed to conduct your health assessment, if you did not conduct the health assessment then, there's tendency that you are going to give faulty management or treatment. And that is why one of the principles state that it is an accurate and timely health assessment that it will give foundation for nursing care and intervention. What does that mean? When a patient reports to the hospital convulsing, Why the patient come into the hospital for, and you see that everybody, the, 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 the nest of kin are agitated about the child. Yes, as nurses, you have to be proactive in doing something to make sure that the convulsion cease first. But while you are making sure that convulsion cease first, by the time you touch the child, that is assessment now. You see the way the child is, that the child is dehydrated. Definitely, you see that the child is hyperate by the time you touch the child. You are definitely for certain. You cannot just quickly stand and going to bring injection or you want to do anything. You first of all see at what is the issue? When does this start? And while you are doing that, you are, get, you are gathering information. Okay, having fever. Already you touch the child, you describe that the child is having high fever, that even without temperature, the child is very hot to touch, without you, you using thermometer. At that point, you know that this temperature has to come down before the conversion stop. And that is why they said that it provides foundation for nursing care and your intervention. You cannot just say because everybody that is conversing have fever, no, because from an uh, issue of conversion, might, depending on the stage, depending on the age of the individual involved, if it's a child or it's an adult. But your assessment provides you with the kind of nursing care you are going to give and, the, and, the, and your intervention. The second principle is that a comprehensive assessment 
incorporate information about the client's physiology, psychosocial, spiritual health, cultural and environmental factors, as well as client developmental status. So when you are conducting physical assessment, a comprehensive assessment, remember that it has to do with all everything, the, entire, the entirety of that individual. The physiological stage, that is when you make use of the of the of the instrument or of um, all kind of uh, equipment to ascertain the health status of that individual. Then you talk about the psychosocial, talk about the spiritual health, cultural, then the environmental factors, and also the client developmental status. Definitely, you cannot be seeing old woman about 70 years, now we're asking what developmental status, how, do, how were you able to develop from childhood to that stage? No, but when you're dealing with children, always remember that there are developmental status has, is a component of a comprehensive health assessment. Number three, the health assessment process should include data collection, documentation, and evaluation of claimed health status and responses to health problem and intervention. So health assessment, you cannot conduct health assessment without you recording it, without you doing any documentation. Because what you are, what you are, the, the health assessment you are conducting has a goal, has an end. An end of it is for you to be able to determine the, the need of that, of that patient or client, for you to be able to respond to the health problems and be able to carry out the appropriate intervention on the individual. So always have it at the back of your mind that health assessment process must include data collection, documentation, and evaluation as much as possible. So number four, all documentation should be objective, accurate, clear, concise, specific and current. What they mean by being objective, there's no need for you to be hyper about the finding of the patient. Yes, the patient temperature read 38. At the point of view, oh, you, there's no point for you to say, madam, your child is having high fever. The high fever, you have to define it. Yes, this patient is having fever. Is 38. Is 37. You must be objective and be accurate. When the patient temperature is 40, is 40, and you have to do this and this and this. When it's 40, that is not the time you're supposed to be telling the mother, no, this child temperature is nothing to worry at all. It's just like I am about 40. When you know the implication of 40 to the brain. So as much as possible in your documentation, you have to be objective, set it the way it is. It must be accurate. It's, what, it's 40 degrees centigrade, very accurate. And you have to be specific. Conducted at 5 a.m. So as much as possible, it has to be concise. You have to be sure of what you are saying. Health assessment is practiced in all healthcare settings, wherever there is nurse client interaction. Like I said before, everywhere you are, you conduct health assessment. Even if you are at home, as nurses, if you are at home and you see something around your environment in, within your neighbors, you see, like, oh, let me see, how is this? It's not if it's a child. So, as nurses, Everywhere you are, you find yourself, you have to conduct health assessment in one way or the other. But when you are now dealing with clients, anywhere you are that you have to look at clients, whether you are a school nurse, you are an occupational nurse, health assessment is practiced in all healthcare settings. And that is why when I ask you a question in this class, you dare not tell me that you have not seen it because you are a professional nurse. If, uh, if there are, uh, what do you call them now? Chew or, uh, from, uh, chew or environmental health students. I can take them, take them out. But in this class, all of us in this class, the over 1,000 of us that are supposed to be taking these courses, this course 
are professional nurses. So when I ask you a question, you should be able to answer because it's just like something that will help you to, 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 to carry out your nursing profession better as student that, I, that is in this uh, program. So information from health assessment should be communicated to other healthcare professionals in order to facilitate collaboration, management of clients, and continuity of care. This number six, please take note of this. Take note of healthcare professionals. Healthcare professionals. The information you gather, because when you look at the number seven, it's talking about client confidentiality should be kept. So, but it's not outside the health professional. You should keep that confidentiality. Especially, especially health professionals that are working directly with the patient. For instance, during your examination, during your physical assessment, you discover breast lump because you are doing health to toe assessment. That patient is in the hospital as a result of malaria fever. And during your health assessment, you discover a lump. Is it not appropriate for you to report to the medical team when they come to check on this patient? Is, it, is that right? Yes. Or we keep it to ourselves because we want to keep the patient confidentiality. It's not helping. I need a response. We disclose to the other professional. Okay, you disclose to other professional that are managing. Is it any professional at all? Let me, for instance, no, attention, attention, please. Hold on. If you discover that a patient is having a breast lump on examination, you report to the medical team your colleague or the laboratory scientists? In the medical team, medical team, uh, apart from the, uh, the, the laboratory. They report to the medical team. The nurses, the medical doctors that in charge of that patient. Okay. Yes, thank you. So you report to people, I've heard you, you report to yes. people that are directly involved in the care of yes. that patient. So there is no point for you to, to, to go and tell the lab scientist because the lab scientist doesn't have any direct contact in the management of that patient. Am I right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, right. and please always keep that, that when you are, when you collect information, that need to be shared with a uh, with medical team to enhance the, the the health of that individual. You have to share it. That is not the confidentiality the number seven is talking about. Now the last, like we said, consent is very vital, but it's not one of the principles because principle is something that is behind, different from your responsibility. I think we have talked on the video that I sent earlier last. This week, is still this week, yes. The, the video I sent on this um, week two, talk about your responsibility and your role. Your role is that you have to seek consent and the, but when you're talking about principles, principle has to do with what is behind what you are doing. What should guide you while you are doing a certain things. Am I right? So not seeing consent here, is not a is not in error because we have discussed roles and responsibility. Are we are we together? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma so for now, this is all we have under principles of health assessment. Any question? Any question? I can hear sound. If there is any question, please let me take your questions. Or can I ask my own question? 
Yes, Max, your question. Oh, thank you. And I'll be looking, everybody will put on their video so that I will be sure that nobody is looking at their, their book or the whatever they have. Can I ask my questions? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I think I will type it on the on the chat box. Then everybody will respond and I will read as we respond. I'll read our response to us. So when you see it, just click on your own chat engine and respond to that. Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Okay. Yes. <clears throat> we have five minutes. Three minutes for this assignment because it's just only one. Mention three information that should be incorpor incorporated in the comprehensive health assessment. I'm sure everybody has seen it. So this is 1052 by 1055. I should be able to have the answers. I hope everyone is working. Yes, ma'am. I expect you to mention three, not one. Yeah, I see somebody sending one. <laughs> Don't send it one, one. You write it together, then you send. You write it together. I think I will stop when we we'll look at, we we'll review the, 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 the answers by 10.55. We have less than one minute to go. Yeah. Thank you. 
by God's grace, in our next class, I'm going to give multiple choice because in this class, our exam is E exam. So we'll be more with multiple choices. Are we together? I think that is how we should go. Now, I won't read what everybody said. I'll just select few. Consent, uh, no, I think this no way will start from. Yes, mention three. Physical history. That is somebody respond. Do we have physical history in our today's class as part of the principle? Okay, let me even ask. The issue of, the question I asked was, okay, the issue of a comprehensive assessment, do we mention it in our class today, did we? as part of the principle. Hello. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Ma. Did we mention did we mention it? Yes. Yes. Yes, yeah, we mentioned that yes, a comprehensive assessment will be included in our physical health, in our health assessment. And we said that it has to incorporate certain factors, and those factors are more than three. I now say that, you see how multiple choice is being set now. It, it's not coming as, is this part of principle of health assessment? No. But what I say now is that mention three information that should be incorporated in a comprehensive assessment. And in our principle, we mentioned that certain things should be incorporated in, in a comprehensive health assessment. We mentioned it today. You cannot tell me that. I think anything, anything that comes in after 10.55 will not take that. So let's see. Somebody say present history. Did I mention, is, is that part of the comprehensive uh, assessment? Present no. history. No. Thank you. Oh, man. Then physiological, spiritual, cultural, and environmental. Is it part of the, of the factor that should be included? Yes, 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 it's part of it. Then physical history. Is it part? No. no. No, physical history is not part of it. No. Oh, past medical hi history. No. 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 Past medical history is not there. Then no. psychosocial, no. cultural, and environmental. We have said that is there. Past surgical yes, history. Yes, post surgical history, is it there? No. no. The patient biodata that include name, age, sex, is, are these ones, are they there? No. 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 I think I even see allergy is there. Present history, no. We are not talking no. about history taking now. So we we'll look at, as we go on, we we'll see the differences. And another person is talking about family social history. It's not part of it. Social history, past and physical medical history, surgical history is not part of it. Then we have physical, social, psychological assessment. Do we have physical assessment here? No. What did we have? Physiological, psychosocial. It's not the aspect that I talk about which I want to emphasize on. There was area that we mentioned physiological, not physical. There is difference between physical and physiological. Please take note. I think so far, for I'm still seeing physical, mental, and spiritual history. We did not talk about history. Are we together now? And when you say comprehensive health assessment, when you are talking about psychosocial, the psychosocial definitely mental will come in. But at this point, the question being asked that what part of the what and what factors will you consider in a comprehensive assessment? I was not expecting anybody to talk about physical history, 
past medical history because that is not what is in your course material. Are we together? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay, I think we have done well today. I don't know if any of you have any questions. Who is sharing my screen now? Okay, I think we are done. Excuse me. Yes, any question? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay, you can ask your question. Somebody is sharing my screen. And I think I need to, I, I may have to send another link data so that I will disable some of these things. I actually leave it on in case if I have something to ask you to share. But that shows that you want different link every week. We'll see how we can manage. Okay, I think I've done that. Who wants to say something? Yes, you can speak on, please. Ma, please, ma, can you please uh, explain more about this comprehensive? Which aspect you did not understand? Yes. Can you Hello. Explain more about this comprehensive incorporation. Hello, it's a good week. I should explain more on comprehensive assessment. Yes, that when you now when you are doing comprehensive assessment, you are not focusing only on physical history. No, comprehensive assessment talk about major aspects that you look into because it's a comprehensive. And that's why when you mention physiology, physiology is not just physical alone. You have to look at the, the you have to look at the the health parameters. Talk about blood pressure because you are looking at physiology at your own level. At this time, we are not talking about lab investigation. What you can get with instrument now, you talk because you are looking at physiology. You talk about the temperature. Talk about the pulse because those one tells you the the functionality of the system of that individual. And that is why I said that it incorporate physiology aspect. Then when you talk about the psychosocial, the psychosocial talk about the interaction of that individual. So it is, it's a major issue, it's a major aspect that you have to look at, not just like this patient is not smiling, he's smiling, no. So when you are doing comprehensive assessment, the, the facial expression of that individual, you are talking about psychosocial now, the facial expression of that individual, you look into it. Oh, madam, why are you looking like this? Some people might be crying on you doing your assessment. Okay, why are you crying? What is the issue? From the interact from your interaction with the client, you move from one aspect to the other. In another, that is talking about psychosocial. Now you have gone beyond just madam, you are not smiling. Why are you not smiling? Are you are you with me now? So is you going in depth beyond what you are seeing physically. Going in, and when you talk about the spiritual health, for somebody that is dehydrated, oh, madam, you look that as if you are dehydrated. And the woman will tell you, oh, you know, I've been, I've been fasting for 40 days. Then you are going into spiritual aspects now. Or if you say that, okay, you have been fasting up to 40 days, you have to go deeper. This you're fasting because of your situation. You look so dehydrated. But if you are taking water, are you with me now? You have to let the individual know this, the health implication of that. So it has, we are talking about comprehensive, not just, not just focus. Because it's all comprehensive talk about the total assessment of the individual from head to toe. Then when it comes to culture, the moment certain culture, you may, some people mention certain culture in an area. You know the health implication of such, of such culture. So you go deeper 
into it that has health implications on an individual. And so on, so on, so on, so for that is how you handle that of comprehensive. It's not, it go, it go beyond you just saying, oh, hey, you look dehydrated. I hope you are taking enough water. Do you understand now? And you see the technique of conducting in a health assessment. You have to prompt your patient or your client to speak. And if you just want to ask and end it like that, you may not be able to get much. Our time is gone. So let me take Helen. Uh, Sandra, have I answer your question? Hello, Sandra. Okay. Helen, unmute yourself. Yes, yes, ma. Yes, ma. Hello, ma. Okay, I've heard you. Helen, unmute yourself. I can only take Helen and Al Harry. That is all we can take today and when the class. Yes, Helen. Okay. Yes, ma. Please. Uh... I just want to ask, it's not part of this, but it's still on our course. I'm a hundred, I, uh, I started ent entering hundred levels. So I did human anatomy one and human physiology one. But I saw it on my desktop. I didn't register it, but I registered human anatomy two. Am I okay with that, man? Sorry, you did, during your, what, what, what year did you enter? I entered a, uh, a, uh, uh, 2020. So I, I, the last semester was my la, uh, second semester, 100 level. Okay, so last I semester is on, second semester, 100 level. So you are your third semester in this program. No, right? no, 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 no. So, ma, sorry, you didn't get me. I'm in my second semester, first year. But what I'm trying to say that I did human anatomy and human physiology 1-1 one, one, in my second semester, 100 level. And that show you are in third semester now in this program. Is this your no, third semester? No, no, no. It's my second semester. Two hundred. This is your second semester now. No, because it's written second semester, but I'm saying that I'm running the same course with this present one because I saw all my. Madam, my... hold on, madam. What I'm asking you is this. You say you enter in 2020. I say, is this your third semester now? Have you done two exams? In uh, in 200 level? <laughs> no, that is fine. I'm in 200 level now, man. I'm in 200 level. Everybody here, everybody in this class are in 200 level. Okay. And that's why I'm asking you, is this your third? Have you done two exams before? Or one? Yes, ma. Yes, ma. In 100 levels. That's 100 level. Two exams. Okay. Yes. You have done two exams. Yes, ma. Yes, ma. So you are in set, you are in first semester 200 level. Yes, you, are, you should have done anatomy and physiology 1-1. One, one. Yes, I did that. Yes. And yes, I passed. you have done that. So now, what you're supposed to do, like you said, I think you, you are right. You're supposed to do anatomy two with this current set. You won't do 205 yes, again. Yes, ma. Yes, ma. Yes, ma. Yes, ma. You so will not I do physiology. Not you will not do physiology one because you have done yes, that. Yes, yes, ma. So I did you, I... Yes, so you are to do every other courses you have not done with this class. Okay. Yes, I'm so. Thank you, ma. Thank you, ma. I even yes. send a mail that you didn't answer that I understand, right? This woman. Thank you very much, ma. I appreciate you. Okay. Amen. Yes. I think we should call it a day, everybody. Uh, before we go, hello. This is after 11. For those of you that cannot join the class, you can watch the video later. When the link is available, I'll post it on the first page. You can watch the video. Probably next week, Monday, we'll look for another time so that we can have extra classes within the week. And if possible, if we can finish all our eight facilitation in the next two weeks i'll be so happy so we may have to meet friday and let's see saturday can we meet tomorrow by 8 a.m for 201 yes 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 okay, i'll send you the link so that we'll have 8 a.m for 201 that is 8 to we'll have it 8 to 9 and probably yes, 9 to 10, we'll have a 209. Oh, OK, bye-bye. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.